Good morning, and it's Leslie Zemeckis, and Mondays are murder. I've had an insane week, and I'm doing the best I can. I'm multitasking up a storm, two-hour workouts, several projects in different stages, which I know is true of most of us. My guest this week, and I'm so happy to have her because I knew she'd be fun, and frankly, I needed a little fun. So, Marcy Darling has written several books, of which I can't find right now, that are her mystery books. Here's her divorce diva. Fantastic. Um, and I can't find stuff because somebody said I should blame it on Saturn, which I'm doing. So, something up in there in the sky needs to work itself out. Anyway, Marcy is a professor, a belly dancer, an author of four books. She has mentored with my Stories Matter program. She's one of the smartest women I know, very well read. Her mystery books are very Agatha Christie, but with feathers and fashion. Her last one was about a trunk of stolen Josephine Baker costumes, and it took place partly in France and also in New Orleans. And well, you should just read it. So here is Marcy with her tips on how to murder. So go out there and write a crime. And I'll see you back here next week, possibly with clothes on, for more murderous tips. Hello, I'm Marcy Darling, and I'm here to give you three tips on committing the perfect murder. Tip number one, make it splashy. And I don't mean blood spatter. I'm talking commit your murders with style. So how do you do this? Well, it's fun. I pour myself a drink and I watch endless Hitchcock movies and I call it research because nobody committed murder with as much style as Hitchcock in my opinion. So think Cary Grant, Grace Kelly, Tippi Hedren, Tippi Hedren, murderous birds, murderous dizziness, murderous planes chasing men through cornfields, vintage trains, I mean, there's just no better style for murders. I would suggest a police ride along. However, I learned the hard way that that was not very effective because I went to the New Orleans Police Department with my first mystery novel and said, I would like to ride along with the police on their next murder case. And I was laughed out of the station. Actually, it was a gorgeous woman running the front desk in her uniform and she didn't really have a sense of humor and I was more glared out of the station. So I quickly learned I would be better off learning more about murder through uh, films and other books. Tip number two, make your weapons creative. I bizarre, have a bizarre love of researching creative weapons. So in my murder mystery, uh, Martini mystery, I had the murder weapon be something called the Kalishimard, which is a type of antique French sword from pre-Civil War days that men would carry and the, and the tip would be so sharp, it would actually be a weapon. So this is a double whammy for a great, great um, thing to add to a book because not only is it a murder weapon, but it gives me a chance to explain to my reader a little bit of history. I also loved researching things like pens that were also knives or lipstick that was poisoned or different ways to murder people in a creative way. It's actually a really fun thing to study. Um, tip number three is choose your murder victim wisely. My mystery novels are lighthearted and entertaining because that's my goal with my writing. Um, but I usually choose as my murder victor victims um, a kind of an annoying side character <laughs> that people won't be too distressed about or a symbol. Um, a symbolic character. So I didn't think of it this way, but I later realized that when I wrote Martini Mystery, um, my first murder victim is a man who is dressed as a monk and he's in a Joan of Arc parade in this amazing setting, which is this parade that's filled with torches and candles and chanting monks and Joan of Arc dress, women dress as Joan of Arc in her different time periods in her life as her soldier, as her farm girl. And they go to Jackson Square in New Orleans and they reenact the pulling of the sword out of the cathedral because New Orleans is the sister city to Orleans, which is where Joan of Arc was from. And um, so in my first scene, well, not in the first scene, but my first murder victim, I have a monk 
who's been stabbed, but she doesn't, the detective doesn't know yet, fall on my, my main character, who coincidentally is wearing this coat, the Garbo coat. <laughs> um, she lives in a rich fantasy world of old movies. And um, this is the first time that some, the, her fantasy world is being ruptured. This dead body falls on her and it spurs her on to um, have to go into the underbelly of New Orleans and really explore this world that she has purposely avoided all this time. But now she's been pushed into it against her will and the murder victim helped to do that. So symbolically, it was her fantasy life um, being killed off as she starts to learn about the darker side of life. But if I wanted to write a more serious, um, scary mystery, I would choose a victim maybe who was a main character. So um, somebody who was more important to the reader because then the reader's more invested, more upset, and will follow along the, with the line of the story. And it's not like I write mine more humorous and um, frothy. It's more serious and, and hard to deal with. And I also have a bonus. And that is to listen to murder music while you're writing. So that means to get into the mood, cell block tango, Mac the knife, murder ballads, songs about people who really get worked up and write about um, these, you know, murder, which is something we're all fascinated by. Um, and even, I even have candles. This one's called Baker Street. And if you love mysteries like I do, you know that is where Sherlock Holmes lived and that is the candle that I light when I'm writing my mystery novel. And something about it just helps me create more ambiance for myself when I'm writing my stories and my characters. So those are all my tips. I hope you've enjoyed them. Cheers. Happy writing. <laughs>